and today we are going to discuss the uh, classical and folk dance right good evening students welcome back to plutus is right so you know very well we are discussing the uh, art and culture topics art and culture topics so in that we have completed like four to five topics and today we are going to discuss the uh, classical and the folk dance right so both the aspects we are going to cover uh, both are very very important from the point of view of examination and similarly in tomorrow's uh, class we are going to cover the classical music and also the folk music right so they are also very important not only the uh, mainstream music or mainstream dance uh, the folk dance and folk music are also important uh, when it comes to folk uh, folk culture uh, only thing that is missing is the painting so because of the paucity of time i could not cover the painting i have covered only the historical uh, kind of painting and i could not cover the folk painting from your side you try to cover the folk painting also not much uh, styles are there there are only a uh, few styles in painting like the madhubani painting and uh, kalamkari painting so like that there are few only prominent few paintings are there styles of painting are there just you try to uh, cover them right so this is about the folk culture so mainly when you when you see the folk culture three things are important that is uh, folk music folk music folk dance and uh, the folk painting folk painting uh, these are the three important aspects from our examination point of view right in that i am covering two aspects folk music also i am covering folk dance i also i am covering painting you try to cover from your side so this is a brief introduction about the lecture so in this we are covering the classical dances eight classical classical dances we are covering you know very well in india eight dances are recognized as the classical dances right so classic uh it has very Im important meaning classic in indian tradition there are ca classical languages also right uh six classical languages are there apart from sanskrit tamil so other classical languages are there uh the other languages like telugu and before telugu kannada was also given kannada was given the classical language status uh, status then telugu then malayalam is also given and then odisha or odia these are the four classical languages before that the two important or prominent languages are sanskrit you know it is already there the mother of all the north indian languages next is tamil one of the four most languages in south india and some people say that it is uh, even ancient than the sanskrit the original language from where the sanskrit has sorry tamil has emerged is the dravidian language or it is also called as proto dravidian language right from there all the south indian languages have emerged like tamil kannada telugu malayalam right so all the south indian languages have emerged from uh, the uh, Uh, this language only dravidian language only all the five uh, languages all the five south indian languages have emerged from that uh, language only right so this is about the classical languages have a fair idea and there are certain conditions also based on which <coughs> the classical language status will be conferred on a particular language try to have an idea about them also however we will come to our uh, discussion present discussion that is about the classical dances so i was explaining the me meaning of classical dances so one of the character feature characteristic feature of classic is it should be there for a from a long period of time it should be there from a long period of time right 
so and uh, <coughs> you can say that tradition used to be continued without much dilution without much dilution that tradition has to continue for several uh, several year and one more thing is it should face some threats all right so uh, these are some of the various conditions which make a language or make something classical so here also we have eight classical dances uh, for most of the time there were six uh, classical dances only so in the past decade uh, in the in the past one decade time we have added two more language uh, two more dances also that is uh, satariya satariya is from assam and mohini attam mohini attam so these are the two classical dances that have been added recently recent past apart from that we have six language six classical dances so those are bharatanatyam bharatanatyam the first one second one is kuchipudi not essentially in this order they have been recognized just i am giving the list so kuchipudi bharatanatyam you know it is the classical dance i mean each and every classical dance is associated with a particular state you should also remember that one so bharatanatyam it belongs to tamil nadu kuchipudi it is the state dance of andhra pradesh right so it is the state also the state dance of andhra pradesh next we have uh, <coughs> uh, next we have <coughs> kathakali kathakali we have right it is kerala again kerala so you remember there are two dances that are hailing two classical dances that are hailing from kerala one thing is one is kathakali it is there from before and recently mohini attam also uh, added from kerala state so these are three another three are kathak so mostly kathak is associated it is practiced widely in north india but essentially it is associated with the state of uttar pradesh present state of uttar pradesh next we have odissi odissi it is it has roots and good association with odisha next is the last one is manipuri so this is the classical dance emerges from the manipur state of india so from north india in total we will see two dances manipuri and uh, satariya these emerge from the uh, northeast states of india so here uh, definitely you will see the domination of south india south and east india when it comes to classical dances so this is the brief introduction about the classical dances right so before we will in detail discuss about each and every classical dance but before that we will see some common features that are there in the all classical dances so if you see the theme a uh, theme is the major aspect of a classical dance there will be a theme through that dance they will be still telling that story right so themes are basically taken uh, they are steeped in tradition and spirit spirituality uh, many themes have been drawn drawn from hindu my mythology epics like ramayana mahabharata and the religious themes also so uh, in the kathak you will also see lot of romantic themes romantic themes like uh, radha and krishna so those kind of dances will also be there so <coughs> this is about the theme majorly it is there in historic and the traditional it has do deep roots in the indian mythology right so the origin can be traced to the origin of the dances classical dances can be traced to uh, traced to natya shastra it is considered as the foundational text for caste classical indian dances right so not only for dances it is natya shastra can be uh, say, i mean the the origin of the classical music also we can trace it from the natya shastra all right so bharata has written this natya shastra remember that right bharata bharata's natya shastra right so uh, important aspects in this are in the classical dances are tandava and lasya right 
so these uh, two sanskrit terms they represented two da- primary dance expressions so tandava ex- uh, embodies the masculine energy that is associated with the uh, male dance that is masculine energy vigorous movements and the kampu cosmic power whereas lasya it signifies feminine grace which is something related to female beauty and serenity so tandava and lasya remember these words apart from that nritya natya and nritta these are also, these three concepts are also very important so these terms define the three key aspects of classical dance performance nritta natya and nritya right so nritya it is expressive dance it combines storytelling with emotions using body language mudras mudras are also known as hand gestures and facial expressions so nritya is the highest form in the dance it has uh, the theme it has story there is storytelling in the dance there are expressions there are emotions there is language body language everything is there so it is the among the three it is the highest form of dance next there is natya it is also known as dramatic dance it enacts a story or thematical performance through dance movements and expressions right so this is natya next there is only nritta so it is it focuses on rhythm and aesthetics showcasing intricate footwork body movements and formation so if you remember in nritta there is no storytelling there is no uh, exact theme there is no storytelling even for uh, that matter natya also there is no storytelling nritta is just dancing to the tune of music that's it there is no theme so just little bit advanced uh, uh, dance performances that is known as natya right so apart from music there is steps according to the music and there is some meaning in the music there is importance for literature also so when you go to nritya there is entire storytelling there is a perfect theme in the nritya right so majorly in nritya this is uh, somewhat associated with folk dance so generally you won't see a theme uh, in the folk dances just people enjoy dancing so from the activities real life of the folk people the dance has emerged so it has no specific theme just people dance for the happiness so that is folk dance apart from that you will have mudras hand gestures it is the distinctive feature of indian classical dance right so costumes and ad- uh, adornment this is also very very important so costumes various different different co- costumes have been uh, will be uh, we, c- we can say uh, costumes are uh, used in the performance like jewelry head pieces and half uh, half often we see in kathakali kuchipudi odissi etc so we will see the pictures also of various dances then you will come to know about them right so apart from that music and rhythm will be there associated with the music right play it plays an integral role in the classical dance performances music plays an integral role in the classical dance performances right so this is about the uh, classical dances brief explanation common features of the all the classical dances so first we will see the bharatanatyam so it is the uh, associated with tamil nadu so in the image you can see the pose uh, one of the poses in bharatanatyam so the hand gesture so this these gestures these are known as mudras there are various types of mudras so each mudra shows it gives an ima- i mean it gives some information each mudra is associated with some story right so this is about the mudras and you will see the you can see the posture dance posture of bharatanatyam right so origin it is originated in tamil nadu right <coughs> so it is traditionally performed by women in the temples right so initially it is practiced uh, uh, by the devadasis devadasis who have been dedicated to the service of the temple and uh, gods they were the uh, practitioners of bharatanatyam later uh, it has been spread, uh, spread to other uh, i mean other people have also sta- uh, started learning it and performing it they have other people have also started that right 
if you see the uh, if you see the theme of the bharatanatyam so it has uh, religious and uh, religious themes and stories particularly from hinduism so dances express uh, dances express bhakti and portray characters from epics and mythology right so dance elements expressive footwork you can see Dan- uh, dancers wear gungros or ankle bells uh, that accumulate the rhythmic footwork mudras will be there right so nritya natya and nritya all three will be encompassed in that facial expressions they also play an important role in the dance performance bharatanatya atter if you see they wear dancers we dancers wear beautiful silk sarees with rich drapes and vibrant colors right so apart from that they will wear uh, jewelry including head pieces necklaces and elaborate ornaments right performance structure if you see it follows a typical structure right alari pattu right so it uh, an invocation piece to set the tempo and introduce the rhythmic patterns next uh, jatiswaram will be there uh, pure dance emphasizing ritta shukasing intricate fo- footwork etc next there will be sabdam varnam so all these things will be there next tilana it is the concluding energetic dance segment focusing on rhythm and uh, virtuosity so this is the pattern structure in the bharatanatyam remember these words alari pattu jatiswaram sabdam varnam and tilana right this is about bharatanatyam so now we will see the kuchipudi it is the state da- the origins are there in andhra pradesh especially the coastal andhra pradesh <coughs> right so in the image you will see the dance pose from kuchipudi right so it is emerged in the village kuchipudi there is a village called kuchipudi so the roots are there uh, for this particular dance right uh traditionally it used to be performed by men uh kuchipudi's roots trace back to a temple rituals and traveling bharatanatya perform uh, performers called bhagavatulu so earlier men used to perform it now it is completely transformed women are the increasing increasingly performers of this dance so dance style if you see it is a dynamic dance from blends together elements like elements of nritta nritya and natya so dance style is known for its expressive storytelling vivid costumes energetic footwork etc all these things will be there unique eye movements will be there singing and music will be there that is associated right so these are the aspects related to kuchipudi right performance structure if you see nattuvangam that is there it is a rhythmic invocation of uh, using syllables and body pers- uh, percussion to set up the tempo next mela prapti that will be there uh, sabdam will be there tarangam will be there so tarangam is a solo dance performed on a brace plate with the rhythmic footwork and leg movements remember these things also next uh, drama will be there that is also natya the enactment of a scene from a play or mythology will be there next last tilana will be there it is a concluding energetic dance segment ditta focusing on rhythm and virtuosity so again like bharatanatyam kuchipudi has, has also a structured performance again remember these uh, words once again uh, nattuvangam mela prapti sabdam so sabdam is common for um, bharatanatyam and uh, kuchipudi tarangam drama or natya tillana so tillana is also common to bharatanatyam and kuchipudi right so this is about kuchipudi next another important dance kathakali so kathakali is not only for its uh, not only famous for its dance performance but also for its you know interesting costume huge interesting costume including the face mask right so it has its origins in the kerala the southernmost uh, uh, state of india kerala right right so it draws inspiration from temple and folk arts like uh, 
krishna natam and religious dramas right so and uh, unlike the other classical dances kathakali incorporates movements from ancient martial arts uh, arts traditions of south india so the roots are the background is ancient martial arts from there the kathakali dance has emerged right uh, so so it involves a story a spectacular storytelling they are known for their elaborate costumes vivid makeup and dramatic story telling stories are primarily adapted from hindu epics like mahabharata ramayana right and delve into the themes of gods demons and the human struggles uh, distinctive visuals will be there costumes the dancers wear colorful and heavily decorated costumes male characters portraying virtuous roles wear green or off white costume evil characters are adorned in red black or dark green color head pieces uh, and facial masks further enhance the visual drama apart from that we will also see a head elaborate makeup mukha mukha pudra it is a significant form in this particular art right so different colors and patterns they symbolize specific characters and emotions right so performance elements if you see uh, similarly there will be nritya nritta nritya and natya will be there mudras will be there music is associated uh, with the uh, uh, dance and the training if you see uh, kathakali training is a very rigorous process demanding physical discipline and dedication right so it is a highly stylized art form with codified movements and expression right so this is about the kathakali dance next important dance form is mohini attam so this is also uh, origin i mean this is also originates from kerala state only but very different uh, it when compared to uh, kathakali the gestures the costume itself very very different in the image you can see uh, this is the kathakali dance this is the mohini attam dance right uh, it is literally translates to dance of the uh, enchantress that is the exact meaning of the mohini attam right so it embodies grace femininity and a unique narrative style that are, those are the specialities of mohini attam right so it's their roots believed to be ancient only and the dance is associated with the kerala state right so legend associates the dance with the hindu deity vishnu's enhancing mohini avatar so you know the avatar of vishnu as mohini so when the uh, the <coughs> the uh, <coughs> there was a fight or we can say fight between the gods and the demons about the amrita right so the uh, vishnu uh, he become a mohini and he served the uh, uh, the amrit to the gods but by served did not serve the amrit to the uh, demons or rakshasas so that story you know very well uh, that hap- everything has happened in the during the mohini avatar of vishnu so the roots are there right dance style if you see lasya lasya you know femin- femininity grace all these things things will be there so it falls under the lasya category dance emphasizing feminine grace beauty and elegance soft curving movements will be there gentle curving movements and ba- of body and limbs will be there expressive eyes and facial expressions will be there solo performances generally these are solo performances right so costumes also if you see they wear elegant white or cream colored kasabu sarees with golden borders reflecting simplicity and purity apart from that exquisite jewelry and uh, uh, the uh, the dancers wear jewelry including head pieces necklaces temple jewelry designs are also there the dancers apart from that will also wear uh, makeup right so if you see the themes uh, the performances uh, often depict the themes of love devotion mythological stories particularly those involving hindu traditions right 
so the dance can also portray human emotions like longing longing separation and joy etc performance structure this also has a separate performance structure like atakkalatha jatiswaram right sadina melattu this is the third in the structure uh, next is padavarnam next is chollukattu so these are the five steps in the dance dancing structure of the mohini attam right so next important dance is uh, kathak so you you can see the difference so it is completely different from other traditional dance forms right so this is kathak it has unlike the south indian classical dances it has link with the north indian uh, dances right that is hindustani culture so kathak meaning story or to do with the stories in sanskrit it is a captivating north indian classical dance right so it is uh, known for its intricate intricate footwork storytelling gestures and uh, captivating uh, story telling right so they are uh, the origins are traced back to the ancient north indian traveling stories storytellers known as kathakars right so these performance uh, performers used dance music and narration to communicate stories so once uh, over the centuries kathak evolved under the influence of both hindu and muslim cultures right so this also reflects the composite culture this dance kathak dance also reflects the composite culture that is the blend of hindu and muslim traditions right so styles and gharanas if you see uh, kathak has developed into several distinct styles or they are also known as gharanas uh each with its own emphasis that is lakhno garana uh, known for its graceful movements intricate chakras or uh, and uh, subtle storytelling through facial expressions next jaipur karana is there it is characterized by complex footwork patterns with the gungurus powerful leg movements and energetic leaps this is jaipur garana next is banaras garana it is renowned for its expressiveness particularly in abhinaya and storytelling using hand gestures and facial expressions so dance elements if you see footwork is there theka is there that is known as rhythm footwork it is known as chakkar so time and again the dancers will be uh, doing self rounds that is known as chakkas right mudras hand gestures will also be there next chakkars will be there expressive story telling story telling or abhinaya is there right music uh, music equipment or we can say instruments are very uh, part and parcel of kathak those are tabla so uh, and uh, <coughs> other instruments are associated with the kathak right the vocalist also play in an important role so costumes also if you see uh, traditionally loose fitting chudidar pajamas and the long kurtas they are common for both men and women while performing kathak right so they also wear jewelry like necklaces earrings and elaborate head pieces or head games so this is kathak next important dance is odissi so here also you will see specific feature is the head gear in the odissi dance right so this is the dance posture from odissi right the dance is associated with orissa state of odisha right so this uh, dance can be traced back to the ancient temple rituals and mahari dancers who performed in the sacred spaces right so we can say it is the one of the oldest surviving indian classical dance forms right uh, if you see the uh, aspects in the odissi dance important characteristic features it is tribangi known for tripeng tribangi that is triple sway so this signature posture it features a standing position with a bend at the neck torso and the knee symbolizing the grains, graceful bend of temple sculptures so in the image also you can see this is also the tribangi only bending are at uh, at the neck at the torso and at the knee so in the image you can see there is a bend at the neck there is a bend at the torso and there is a bend at the knee this position is known as 
Tribangi. Right. So one thing you have to remember when it comes to Indian art and culture is the Tribangi position. Tribangi position very very important in the Indian art and culture. So it is the Tribangi position. It is coming from the ancient time. So the uh, Indian Indian Valley Indus Valley civilization, IVC civilization. We have got a bronze idol of the bronze idol of a girl, dancing girl. So that idol, uh, that girl is also standing in a Tribangi posture. Tribangi means three folds. Exactly, if you translate that, three folds. So one fold is at the neck, second fold is at the torso, and uh, third bend is at the knee. That is known as Tribangi posture. So in up from there, you will see the Tribangi posture in various sculptures. Also, if you see various temples. there if you observe the sculpture you will see tribangi posture in various uh, throughout the history you will find the tribangi posture right so apart from that bunja will be there that is square stance so this fundamental stand stance emphasizes stability and power often used in foundational movements next mudras will be there Uh, all the three aspects that are associated with the classical dances those are there lyrical flow is there so in the lyrics there is a proper flow so uh, movements are characterized by smooth flowing quality resembling the swaying movements of palm trees or the gentle waves of the nearby bay of bengal cosmetics if you see they wear colorful silk sarees with vibrant prints and intricate borders traditional jewelry like layered necklaces head pieces and elaborate ear ornaments will be weared by the dancers right so they also often wear distinctive eye makeup that accentuates the their expressions thematic content if you see so inspiration is there from hindu mythology only and from the temple art right so the dance depicts deities like krishna shiva durga uh Uh, Vaishnava saga uh, sages also right, right. The the dances can also portray themes like love, devotion to nature, and the human emotions. Performance structure, if you see, uh, Mangala Charan will be there, Bhatunyutra Nritya will be there, Pallavi, Abhinaya, and Moksha. So these are the five uh, structured steps that are there in Odissi dance. Right. So that is about the Odissi now. manipuri dance so here the distinctive feature you, you can see the wearing of this type of uh, lower dress that is the exceptional feature in the manipuri dance so <coughs> it is also referred to as the manipuri ras leela it is a graceful ex- expressive classical dance from originating in the state of manipur in the northeastern india right so it is deeply rooted in the spirituality manipuri dance right so it is deeply ingrained in the vaishnava faith you know very well during the medieval time because of the Chait- influence of chaitanya prabhu uh, the vaishnava cult has spread to entire east and northeast india so <coughs> it uh, ingrained the dance is completely ingrained in the uh, vaishnava faith of meiti people of manipur right so performances often seen as devotional offerings to lord krishna depicting scenes scenes from his life <coughs> life and the ras leela is a divine dance with the gopis or gopikas right so if you see the movements and the storytelling in the uh, manipuri dance lasya anag will be there so it translates to divine feminine movement movement that thing will be there circular formations will be there expressive eyes and the facial expressions will be there right dritta nritya and natya will be there costumes if you see they wear vibrant silk dhoti dresses for men and long flowing sarongs for women so this is i was mentioning about they wear long uh, sarongs flowing sarongs uh, women will wear them men will wear dhotis right so apart from that the costumes are adorned with intricate embroidery and the traditional manipuri jewelry 
featuring head pieces uh, beaded necklaces and elaborate earrings musical uh, musical equipment that accompanies manipuri dances traditional instrument intru- instruments like pena it is a string instrument pung it is a drum and uh, cymbals they create a melodical accomp- they accompany the manipuri dance right so ap- apart from that singers will also chant verses and devotional songs that complement the dance so beyond rasalila rasalila uh, <coughs> there are other themes also main theme is rasalila only so apart from that it encompasses other stories and emotions also right so this is about the manipuri dance and the last is satariya it is associated with assam state so it is a classical dance from assam origins it can be traced to the temples or courtly settings uh, it emerged within the satras or monasteries established by 15th or 16th century vaishnava saint mahapurusha sankara deva right so that uh, the satariya has origin origins from there the satras that have been established by 15th, 15th century uh, vaishnava saint mahapurusha sankara deva right right the dance and the drama were used as tools for religious education and storytelling propagating the tenets of ekasarana uh, ekasarana dharma or moyo monotheistic hindu sect right so here it uses a strong i mean strong storytelling so satariya performances are deeply rooted in vaishnavism and often depict stories from bhagavad gita and uh, portraying the teachings of krishna right so apart from that it also incorporates elements of assamese folk dances like bihu uh, integrating them with the religious narratives right so uh, in their all male ensembles will be there so traditionally satariya is a dance from, performed exclusively by men male da- male dancers wear dhoti attire and a distinctive headgear sometimes with masks right so performers are known for their vigorous movements and the synchronized group formations so satariya satariya incorporates various dance styles within its uh, uh, role so those are bauna nach uh, chali ras leela nritya so all these thing, things will be there apart from that if you see the musical equipment instruments dhol symbols and the flute they create a rhythmic and a devotional soundscape for satariya dance right so this is about the classical dances important aspects related to four class uh, sorry six uh, se- eight class uh, eight classical dances now we will see the uh, folk dances in folk dances just you have to uh, mainly concerned uh, you should be mainly concerning with the dance and its uh, form and uh, the state which with it is associated so first and foremost is bhangra dance it is associated with punjab you know very well so uh, right bhangra dance you are very well associated with so it is uh, uh, synonymous with the celebration and the merry making right it is particularly associated with the harvest festival of baisakhi and performed by men to the beats of beats of dhol so that is bhangra folk dance next giddha folk dance this also you will see in the punjab only it is performed by uh, especially the uh, girls women especially the girls unmarried girls uh, bihu dance it is famous in assam you know very well uh, it is performed by men and women in colorful attire it reflects joy and prosperity of the harvest season so it is also performed during the harvest season next is dandiya ras it is associated with the gujarat so it is uh, essentially performed during the nine day navratri festival that is dandiya ras next is yakshagana it is associated with karnataka right so it is uh, unique to karnataka and uh, but sometimes it is very much associated with the states of ap and uh, telangana also 
some experts say that yakshagana origin actually it originated in uh, not in karnataka but in telangana but however uh, traditionally it is being associated with karnataka only so we will follow that one so it is a captivating blend of dance music and storytelling so it is not just dance it is a kind of drama uh, uh, a play will be there i mean the performance will be there throughout the night people will be watching that performance so night long performances enact the stories from hindu mythology particularly from the epics of mahabharata and ramayana so that is about yakshagana uh, lavani so it is uh, it belongs to maharashtra right so it is known for its uh, graceful movements etc right so traditionally it is performed by women it depicts stories of love uh, loss and social themes right that is lavani next uh, gotipuva it is performed in odisha so remember the associated uh, state gotipuva it is associated with odisha right so it is uh, performed by young boys disguised as female dancers so boys will be performing as disguised uh, female dancers so chau dance it is also associated with the uh, three states odisha jharkhand and west bengal it is a martial folk dance originated in eastern india and known for its vigorous movements so that is about the chau dance it has its background in martial arts next is bhutiyam it is associated with kerala this is a ritualistic folk dance right it is something associated something with the uh, rituals so with the temp- uh, it is associated with the temple festivals and the spirit worship right this is bhutiyam next is vangala this belongs to meghalaya right so it is performed by women during the post harvest festival vangala right so this belongs to meghalaya next is karma dance it belongs to chatisgarh uh, it is celebrated during the karma festival this uh, it hails from chatisgarh right so it uh, depicts the story or love story of the karma raja and karma rani right it is performed by both men and women that is karma folk dance next is jaipalani it belongs to himachal pradesh right uh, it is also a celebration of the harvest season right so jal uh, jaipalani it belongs to himachal pradesh right there are plenty of uh, uh, dances folk dances so just i am giving the name and associated state and uh, occasion when it is performed next is theyam kerala we have already i think seen it right next is dol cholam it uh, it also belongs to uh, it belongs to manipur right so it is performed during the festivals and the celebrations so remember dol cholam it belongs to manipur next is sambalpuri so sambalpuri there is a place or district called sambalpuri odisha so the da- dance hails from there only so it is performed by women during the festivals and the social gatherings next is gumar it be it uh, originate origin is in rajasthan right it is traditionally performed by women during the weddings and the celebratory occasions gumar next is uh, jat jatin it belongs to uttar pradesh right it is traditionally performed by women during the tej festival uh, a monsoon celebration right so remember jat jatin is associated with the tej festival that festival itself is a uh, celebration of arrival of monsoon next is gufa dance it is associated with himachal pradesh so it is uh, it is a harvest festival of magh bihu it is a lively folk dance right next is nulia it belongs to west bengal right it is performed by women during the durga puja the bi- biggest festival in in the state so nulia dance remember it is associated with the durga festival in west bengal next is tippani it uh, originates in the madhya pradesh right it is performed by women during the again during the harvest festival next is cheru dance uh, it has its origins in mizoram right it is performed by both men and women during the festivals and celebrations so these are all the folk dances uh, apart from the ca- classical dances 
just in folk dances you try to remember the dance name the state with which the dance is associated and occasion uh, during which occasion the dance will be performed right so this is it for today tomorrow we will see the folk music and the classical music also right so see you tomorrow until then have a good day right see you tomorrow